It's time to turn your life challenging moments into life changing messages. Welcome to the Power Lift Stories Podcast, where we are interviewing women whose stories will leave you lifted up, fired up, and fueled up with hope, courage, and inspiration. We want to thank our sponsor, Powerful Journey, who helps women tell their stories, write their books, and building a profitable brand around both. Join the Masterclass or the Speakers Academy at phyllisjenkins.com. That is P-H-Y-L-L-I-S-J-E-N-K-I-N-S dot com. Now here's your host, Phyllis Jenkins. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Powerlift Stories podcast. And in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we will be interviewing women who have courageously battled this disease and have come out victoriously and are willing to come forth to share their stories with you, our listeners, so that they can encourage inspire and lift you up. Today I have Ann Nickel with us and Ann, welcome. I am so honored to have you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Ann and I were just chatting before we came on live and we worked in the same district and we were trying to figure out how many years it's been since we've seen each other and we know that it's been at least seven years, so I am so grateful to reconnect with her. And just let me introduce Ann to you. Um, her name is Ann Nichols. She is the mother of three children who are her pride and joy. She has two children who are in college and one in high school. Ann has worked in Frisco ISD for 25 years. Congratulations, Ann. <laughs> Thank you. Three years as an elementary school teacher, 20 years as a campus counselor, and that's where I know you from, mm -hmm. and two years as a student support coordinator. In her current role, Ann travels to three campuses and supports the counselors by seeing students with a higher level of emotional need. And I'm sure, Anne, that you are such a blessing to those counselors and those students. Oh, thank you. Anne is currently a graduate student attending Amberton University, which is my alma mater, All pursuing right. her license of professional counseling. Congratulations on that. Thank and you. hopes to use this license to help adolescents and children in a private practice setting in the future. And again, Anne, welcome to the podcast. I am honored to have you here. And I will kick it off by asking you the question that I always ask before you share your story. If you were to give your story a title, what would that title be? Well, when you asked me to think about that, I really had to think and choose the right words. And the words that just kept coming back to me is, um, God set me up for cancer. Wow. <laughs> and that sounds so, such an odd way, but that was just the way that I kept seeing it. So I love that. And with that said, God set you up for cancer. Share your story with us now. Okay, so a year ago, July 2019, I just went in for my regular annual mammogram. Um, nothing on my radar, had never had any kind of lumps or suspicious anything, so it was just kind of my annual test. And so I got, a few days later, I got a call from the doctor or from the, from the mammogram um, facility saying they needed me to come back in for a second one. And so honestly, I didn't think anything of it, went in for the second one, and then they called me a couple days after that one um, to come in for a biopsy. And still then, I didn't think anything of it. I, um, I mean, I thought a little bit of it, but I wasn't too worried. It was not in my family. Um, 
I just thought, you know, I've talked to many women who have had to go in and get biopsies and they turn out to be benign. And so I just figured that was what was going on. And then a couple of days after that, they called me, <clears throat> pardon me, and told me that it was cancer. And I was just shocked and couldn't believe it and was not prepared for that because I had in my head that it was nothing at all. So um, turns it out, luckily, early detection is key and luckily it was um, stage one and so um, through the last year I've had um, a lumpectomy and I, then I had a, a series of radiation treatments and then I had a few months of chemo so um, even though it was early detected and stage one I still had to go through all of that treatment but fast forward to now um, cancer free everything Yay. you know was successful treatment um it was a rough year definitely but i'm thankful to be on the other side now so. well we are thankful for that as well and what would you say to that woman and who doesn't think of going to get a mammogram is that important oh i would say please go please go for if not for yourself, for your loved ones, for your family, for your kids or your spouse or your parents or your siblings, just, um, you know, I would, wouldn't want to scare her, but I would tell her my story that, it, you know, it's not, it was not on my radar yet. It, um, came up and, and I even had genetic testing done um, and I don't have the BRCA gene that oh, um, is the gene that makes you more apt to get cancer. So I don't even have that gene, so I don't know where it came from. But mm -hmm. I would just tell women, you know, it, it is an uncomfortable test. A mammogram is not fun, but it's five minutes of, of your year mm -hmm. and it could save your life. Yes. So, yes. And for, for women who maybe don't have insurance or um, can't afford, you know, the copay that might go along with it, there are so many uh, agencies and so many places that will help you with that um, financially. So there's really no reason not to get one. Um, this is the way I look at it. And thank you so much for sharing that financial part because there are probably women listen listening that that might have been the first thought that came into their, their head. So uh, thank you so much for for even adding that to it. It's true. There's, you know, I, when I, after my diagnosis, I had no idea what was ahead of me, but I went online and just searched up. I mean, I just Googled financial help for breast cancer and there's so many places. And luckily I did not need to do that. I was okay. My insurance, I had good insurance that covered me, but you know, I didn't know at the time what was ahead of me. So I was just researching and trying to see what was out there in case I needed something down the road. And um, there's so, so many wonderful resources out there for women, so. Well, great, thank you again for sharing that. And, and as we've heard your story and um, your experience, God reveals himself to us through our life experiences. Can you share with our listeners how he has revealed himself through this experience? Absolutely. And this goes right along with my title, God Set Me Up for Cancer, because when it was happening, I just was able to look back and see several ways that God set me up to be able to handle it. So one example was I uh, moved into this house that I'm in 15 years ago. And at the exact same time, another family was moving in three houses down and um, we became friends and her name is Lori, and we've been friends this entire time, um, neighbor friends, and our kids have grown up together. And uh, when I told her that I had breast cancer, she actually had just found out that she had breast cancer. So, wow. you know, God put me on the street with this great friend three houses down um, so that we could go through it together. And nobody wants to go through it with anyone else. You don't wish it on anyone. But We've had many, many conversations that, you know, we don't know how we would have done it without each other because, you know, albeit we did have different 
treatment paths and experience different treatments, just something about, um, we just were bonded uh, and supported each other and uh, cried with each other and talked about side effects with each other and just so many things. And now we uh, toasted my one year anniversary a couple weeks ago and we'll be toasting hers in a couple weeks. And we talked about what a God thing that we moved in. And so God set me up, God hooked me on the street with Lori down the street and so that um, we could be together through this horrible thing that we had to go through. So that was one, that was definitely God revealing himself to me. And then the second one that stood out was, um, you know, I'd been a campus counselor for years and a few years ago, an opportunity to, came up to move into this position that I'm in now. And um, there's a little bit more flexibility. I'm not on a campus. I moved to different campuses, but um, there's a little more flexibility. And also I made on my team, I made two of the best friends um, a person could ever have. Just, we were hired together on this team. And so we've become really close, really fast. And, and they were, they were my rocks through the last year as well. Um, so I know God put me in that job or that career position three years ago so that this past year I'd be able to be in a place where I was blessed enough to have a flexible job and then just have two more human being blessings in my life to help me through. So that was another thing I noticed had that's, to be God. That's great. And it, it, it sounds like that support system that he surrounded you with, Lori, and then the, the two coworkers, um, that they, they help you through this. So what would you say to a woman who is battling this um, and, and trying to do it alone? Oh, I would say do not, do not feel bad reaching out for help or asking for help. Um, a lot of times as women, I think we just try to be strong and handle things and we wanna, we're you know, the nurturers, we take care of others so much. But there are times that we need to be taken care of and um, or we need help as well. So I think the support system definitely helped me through. And, and even if you don't have a huge support system, even one or two people, if there's somebody that you can reach out to, reach out to. Because so many people told me, I want to help you. I just don't know what you need. I don't know what um, how to help you. I don't want to bother you, but I also, you know, it makes me happy to be able to help you and it makes me feel good to help you. So at first I was uh, hesitant to accept so much help. And then I just said, you know, I have all these great people offering to help me. Why would I not, you know, accept their, their help and their, their offerings of dinners for my kids or their, um, offerings of, hey, I'm going to the grocery store, what do you need? You know, little things like that. So um, I would tell the woman who, who is hesitant to reach out, I would say, don't be hesitant. Just reach out. Those people want to help you. I love that you even shared how to receive the help and, and what type of help, because I would be the one, you know, I would know to to take meals, but you know, you mentioned uh, helping with the laundry and, and helping with the children. So for that woman who is on the other side, who wants to be the support for a friend that's going through it, what other, what other ways would you give her to, uh, to reach out? I think one of the things that helped me the most is I had a couple friends or neighbors who would just text me and say, Hey, I'm going to the grocery store today. What can I get you? Um, so every once in a while I would get, and maybe I was craving, you know, tomato soup or something. At one time I remember I was having a craving for that. And so um, I just said, oh, some tomato soup would be great. So, <laughs> you know, and then a lot of times I said, oh, I don't need anything, but they would keep checking in with me. And, and so I think any little errand like that, or even I had people offer to come clean my house or to take my kids to school or pick them up because Peyton wasn't driving yet. And so um, 
the meals are great, but I think even just the little regular check-ins, hey, I'm going to Walgreens, do you need anything? Or, you know, I dropped off some toilet paper and paper towels on your, and paper plates or, you know, like the paper goods, so you don't mm -hmm. have to do dishes. So yeah. those little things like that were so helpful. Those are great tips. And I'm sure that our audience is, are taking notes and, and appreciating, <laughs> um, appreciating it from both sides, that woman who is actually battling with breast cancer and then those who are on the other end saying, hey, I want to help. I want to, to be your support uh, system. I want to encourage you. Uh, you've shared how uh, each side can help, and, and we appreciate that. So, Ann, my... Can I add one, oh, can I add go, one thing? Absolutely. Also, this meant more to me probably than anything altogether. If somebody would just text me and say, hey, I'm praying for you today, mm. or how are you feeling today? What specific, how can I specifically pray? And, you know, I might be having nausea or something. Mm -hmm. And so even, like, just that simple thing, how, you know, what do you need right now? How can I pray for you? That was so meaningful to me. I love that. I love that. And even the times that I battle illness and, and I've received a, a text prayer, the actual prayer, it has meant so much. And, and I, it was there where I could read it over and over again if I wanted to. So thank yeah. you for, for bringing that up. Love that. Well, Ann, you have shared your, your story, your amazing story, and we um, were so excited for you to be sharing your one, one year anniversary, coming up to your one year anniversary. Um, my last question is, we are in this large arena, and you, Ann Nickel, have just stood and shared your amazing story. And the women are now, they stood, they, they gave the biggest applause, applause ever. And they're turning now to walk away, to go to their vehicles. And as you prepare to go to your vehicle, what are three main points that you hope that each woman walked away with? Wow. Um, one would be that God is always working for you. And uh, even in the simplest things of, you know, moving into a new home on a street, you don't know. You know now I can look back and I know why um, we moved into this home. But, you know, God is always working for you in every, uh, every little bit of your life. So I, you know, just that hindsight of looking back and and seeing those gifts and that way he set me up was is still just so like I don't even know how to describe how I feel about it but um, so one thing is God is always working and then kind of along with that is just prayer is so powerful yes. um, my parents and my friends I um, I have kind of a small fr close friend group but um, I have a larger group of people like connections. And so through different connections, I know there were a lot of people praying for me and I could literally feel those prayers carrying me through some days. Um, so prayer, the prayer is so powerful and any, any prayer you can offer up to somebody uh, going through transfer, cancer treatment or just anyone going through anything, every prayer God hears and I know he. Yes. Um, it's just amazing. And then I think a third thing, um, just get your mammogram. <laughs> um, you know, there's no reason not to financial. There's not a financial reason because there's so many places out there that will that will um, help cover it. Um, Time-wise, make that time. If you have a busy schedule, just make that 30-minute appointment and spend those five minutes in an uncomfortable uh, test, but that's just gonna, early detection saved my life. So, you know, get your mammograms, please. That's great. And I, 
I think that would be the takeaways I hope people would take. Well, those are great takeaways. And for our listeners and who might want to follow up with you, maybe there is a woman that's listening that is battling this by herself and would love to just talk with you and, and, and ask you further questions. How can our listeners contact Ann Nickel? I would love to talk to anyone who needs anything. Um, I had a couple people who were really a light for me that um, I kind of were, they were contacts like friends of a friend or something. So I didn't know them, but we were connected and I could ask them questions about side effects or doctors or anything. So I am more than happy for anyone to reach out to me. And probably the best way would be my email. I'll give it here in a minute. And then if you email me, um, we can exchange numbers and connect through a phone call or, or whatever um, might be the most comfortable thing for you, texting or whatever. But my email address is ann.nickel, so it's A-N-N dot N-I-C-K-E-L, one two two nine at gmail.com and i am here for i am here for anyone who wants to connect i'm more than happy thank you so much ann thank you for uh, giving your information to be a further resource for women and support and thank you for sharing your amazing story today uh, for those listeners that perhaps you were driving and didn't get to write Anne's contact information down, if you would go to my website, phyllisjenkins.com, um, P-H-Y-L-L-I-S, Jenkins, J-E-N-K-I-N-S.com, I will have Anne's information in the show notes page on the under podcast or you can just click on the link that you're listening to right now and you can get that information as well. So Anne, again, thank you so much for sharing. And to our listeners, we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you are interested in being on the show, go to phyllisjenkins.com. You can also sign up for the Powerful Journey Masterclass or the Speakers Academy at phyllisjenkins.com.